Bang & Olufsen are back. Say hello to the all new Biosound A5 portable speaker, which certainly looks the part and with a price tag of £899, promises premium portability at its finest. But is luxury really everything that it's cracked up to be or is your money better spent elsewhere? Let's find out. If you're a B&O fan, I know exactly what you're thinking. It looks a little bit like the BioLit 20, right? Well, apparently that's where a lot of the inspiration for this beauty has come from. But no, it's not a replacement for it. This A5 is a completely new addition to the brand's portable speakers lineup. But let's be honest, it's hard not to see the similarities, especially when it's got the classic wireless charging capabilities and the nice wooden handle. One thing this does not have in common, though, is the price. While the BioLit 20 comes in at around £499, the A5 is almost double. So other than looking about as premium as it can get, does this really deliver almost double the performance? Well, that's what I'm here to figure out. Now I know that you're going to be desperate to find out how the A5 sounds, so if that's all that you want to know then feel free to skip ahead to our testing. But with all the B&O heritage, the price tag and all the hype around this speaker, we can't overlook the design because to be honest with you guys, this is exactly what you pay a bit of that premium for. There's currently only two colorways available, this Nordic Weave version that I've got here and a dark oak option. Now both are, in my opinion, great looking speakers and I was torn on which would go best in my home. Now as a heads up, the dark oak version is an extra hundred pounds. So if you prefer that look, you will be paying another premium for it. Now at nearly four kilos, this is actually a really weighty little thing. And I'm not sure the term portable speaker quite does it justice. You're definitely not gonna wanna be lugging it around with you wherever you go. Now instead, I see it more as the type of speaker that you move around the home. You move it into the garden for a barbecue or maybe away with you if you're on holiday or if you're planning on being away for a while and want some premium audio Long for the ride. Aesthetics wise though, the A5 has been a cheeky little collaboration with Gam Fatesi, who I think are like a Danish Italian design team, Sam? Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so like a lot of B&O products, straight away you get that very high grade and premium feel and this sort of Scandinavian style design that seems to be gaining in popularity at the moment. There's no visible plastic anywhere and the whole thing is really minimalist too. You've got this sleek silver textured top with all of your controls. So that's your power, play pause, volume, skip track and Bluetooth pairing buttons. And then there's these four favorite buttons over here which let you save your go-to radio stations or your favorite playlists on Deezer on the B&O app for really quick access. Now I'll run you through how all of that works a little bit later on though. Now all of the buttons are nice and tactile to the touch but my only pet peeve is they're actually really hard to see in dimly lit rooms. Now I know it's not a massive problem but just something that I feel could have been improved. Obviously this is where you've also got your Qi wireless charging capabilities too, which literally works just like this. Now, this was always an iconic feature on the BioLit 20, so it's nice to see it make its way into this model as well, but I'm interested to see what that functionality does for the battery life in our testing. Covering the majority of the speaker, you've got this classy rattan style wraparound grille, which is pretty unique and I think will look great in lots of different spaces. This is a real oak handle as well, which I absolutely love. Handy for moving it around too. Now, as a heavy speaker, it needed a pretty sturdy handle, so they've ticked that box for me. Now, I love all the bits of being no detailing throughout the design on the handle, the trim, it's all typical Bang & Olufsen, but they add so much to the whole luxury feel that I don't think you can go wrong. The rubber base is nice and grippy too, so it's not gonna go anywhere when you put it down, which is always a plus. And then you've also got your charging port and your mic toggle tucked away neatly at the back here. There's no doubt this feels a premium product, and so it should for the price, but I think if anything sums up the whole quality of the design, and this might sound a little bit stupid, it's the charging cable. You don't get this level of attention to detail with many other brands. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think the design is gonna be a little bit divisive, and we have already heard some of your guys' thoughts. It looking like a granny's handbag is by far the best of the bunch that we've heard so far, but for me, it's very classic b &O. We know that alone is gonna make this a winner for a lot of people, but ultimately, I think how you feel about it is all gonna depend on your own personal preference. One of the biggest things that really sets this speaker apart 
though, has got to be its sustainable modular design, which for those of you guys that aren't aware or too sure what that means, it's basically being able to take it all apart change bits and replace them if they ever break without having to replace the entire speaker. It's a really nice bit of innovation, especially from a sustainability standpoint, and it's definitely going to change the game when it comes to getting more life out of our speakers. It's a nice concept, but I do think if we're going to end up paying a premium for it, maybe I'd be a little bit happier getting a completely new product when this one feels a little outdated and recycle as usual. Now, there's a lot to delve into with all of that though, so I'll probably save it for another video. Now, b and have also said that they're planning on making more colorways of these as well, so you could be able to swap them around to suit your style. Obviously, it looks great and all, but as with everything, there's always more than meets the eye. So we've got Wi-Fi 6 with the usual AirPlay 2, Chromecast, Spotify, and Tidal Connect connectivity options. Now, there's also Deezer built into the B&O app, which isn't what I use for streaming normally, but it might be a sign of where B&O are looking to head in the future. Maybe they want to have something similar to the Sonos S2 app, where you can control all platforms in-app. There's also Bluetooth 5.2 if you're out and about without Wi-Fi, which is ideal. And it's it's also IP65 water and dust proof rated too. So there's really no reason why you couldn't take this out into the garden or poolside and not have to worry about getting it a little wet. What about battery then? Well, this speaker offers 12 hours of battery life, which when you consider the context of what this speaker has been designed to do, it does make sense. Other heavy duty portable speakers like the Sonos Move offer a similar battery life. The Move is 11 hours, for example. So actually 12 hours sounds around about right. Now it's worth noting in the B&O app that you can see both the battery percentage and how long it has left in hours and minutes. Now I love this feature as 64% feels a bit vague, but knowing I've got about 10 hours left is great. Now, interestingly, when listening at lower volumes around the home, the time goes up past that 12 hour mark. And you can also see how long it will take to charge back up too, which is great. Now, of course, you could also just keep this plugged in for the majority of the time with the cable tucked away. That probably explains the nice looking cable to be fair. Yeah, that's true. I mean, obviously there's that wireless charging functionality too, which is a massive plus and I've loved using it. It makes me wish more speakers had it, to be honest. Now, like I said earlier, I was a little concerned about it absolutely killing the battery life. So we're gonna test that out now. Okay, so I've just been using the Qi wireless charging on the A5 and I've got the numbers written down. So my phone was on charge for an hour and it went from 64% to 85%, but the speaker dropped from 61% down to 50%. So it's good, but not great. Um, I probably would use it at home if the speaker was plugged in, but I probably wouldn't use it out and about unless I was really in a pinch, but it's still a really cool feature and I wish more speakers used this. So all of that functionality is great, but to really get the most from the Bio Sound A5, you're gonna to want to download the Bang & Olufsen app on your phone or tablet, because there's some pretty neat functionality that I know you guys are gonna to want to make the most of. Now, right at the top, you've got those favorite buttons that I mentioned earlier, and they are super easy to use. Literally just click these three lines here, change the preset radio station to whatever station or playlist you want, and you're good to go. I was worried there would be a little bit of lag in between tapping the physical button on the speaker and then streaming it, but I've not had any issues at all. I think the presets give the speaker a retro radio feel, and I actually really like it as a feature. So you can see I can choose a radio station here, or I could use a Deezer playlist as that's built into that app. Now, as a Spotify user, it would be great if I could do the same with my Spotify playlist or Apple Music too, so fingers crossed for a software update to allow that. Now, you've also got these selectable sound modes, which are all pretty good in their own right. You can see you get quite a lot of detail on the sound signature you're getting, so whether it's warmer, brighter, got more bass, things like that. Now, if you tap this circle here, you'll open up what they call the Biosonic Equalizer, which gives you some nice little fine-tuning features that you can save and change whenever you want, which is always nice. And then down here, there's just some more EQ adjustables and an alarm and timers section. That's pretty standard, but handy to have if you're using this in the kitchen or something. Now you can also run room compensation from the app too, which was literally just one chime and very quick to do, but always worth doing to make sure that the speaker is optimized for the space that you're using it in, especially as a portable speaker, which might be moving around a lot. 
Now, just a quick heads up, you will need to have it plugged in to run that room compensation though. Now, the BO Sound A5 also uses the company's Mozart 2.0 software platform, which we've seen in a lot of other B&O products. Plus, thanks to the introduction of new ultra-wideband wireless technology, there's plenty of room for the software to be updatable and adapt to tech in the future, which is huge, especially considering that modular design. Now, at least we know B&O will be planning on keeping the features coming later down the line if we're expected to have this one for a while. Now, we've also got proximity pairing, which lets you stereo pair two of these speakers if you've got around 1,800 pounds lying around, obviously. Now, there's also BioLink Multi-Room Integrated 2, which does exactly what it says on the tin. So if you're a big B&O fan, then you can have all of your audio seamlessly connected on one simple multi-room platform, which is never a bad thing. You can set an alarm to wake up to your favorite radio station, which I love, and you can set a default volume for it to start playing at, as well as a max volume level too. For me, this app is brilliant. It seems to be a big upgrade on the last time we used it, and there's some great functionality in here. It's definitely a worthy companion app for a 900 pound speaker. What about the internals then? Well, B&O have claimed that this is their most powerful portable speaker ever. And to be fair, under the hood, they've done their best to deliver. So we've got some of the beamforming technology from the BioLab 90 and 50 Hi-Fi speakers, which considering this is only a portable speaker, pretty much speaks for itself. In terms of the actual driver array, it's a four-way system with four Class D amplifiers powering a front-facing 5.25 inch woofer, which according to B&O is their most powerful woofer in a portable speaker to date. Now, there's also a 0.8 inch front facing tweezer here and two two inch full range drivers in the back corners as well to help deliver 280 watts of complete 360 degree sound. Now while spec are important, I'm never one to really let spec lists get the better of me, but I've got to admit, I am excited to give this a listen and I think I kept you guys waiting long enough. So as you can see guys, we're just setting up for the sound test now with the A5. I've got Barry the Binaural mic here. Now just a quick disclaimer that what you hear over YouTube is not exactly what we're going to be hearing right here in the studio, but hopefully this sound test will give you guys a little bit of a flavour as to what this speaker sounds like. Hopefully you enjoyed that one guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought. For me personally, like I've said from the get-go, I never really had any doubts that this was gonna be a very capable speaker. When you consider the build quality, the attention to detail, and the B&O heritage in every other aspect, it should be a given. And to be fair, after testing it out, it did live up to my expectations. It's musical, dynamic, and enjoyable to listen to, which I guess is everything that you'd want from a portable speaker, right? Now, it'd be so easy for me to just sit here and tell you it sounds good. But at this sort of price point, good becomes the benchmark. And I think that the real question has to be, is the performance luxury enough to really warrant the price? Because that's where things get a little bit blurry. In all fairness, it did handle pretty much every genre of music I tested really well and was never unsettled by any of the complex tracks that I'd listened to. The highs were impressive and the mid-range was nice and balanced too. I think for me though, the bass was the standout feature and for a unit of this size, I was actually really impressed. It was ridiculously clean, tight and powerful without ever feeling overpowering. I think from this sort of footprint, you're gonna to struggle to match that low end performance wise. My only bugbear was the bass level did clip a little bit when you started listening at 85 to 90% plus volume, which is something worth bearing in mind, especially if you're looking for a portable speaker that you can really push to the limit. The vocals were still clear and crisp regardless though, and you didn't lose any of those details or layers in the rest of the track. So I guess that's just the trade off that you've got to make when it comes to high volume listening. How you feel about that is gonna depend on what you're after, audio wise though, and if you're on the lookout for a portable that you can really ramp up the volume on, 
then you might want to look elsewhere. The 360 degree driver array definitely helped deliver a pretty expansive soundstage that you could listen to from any angle, but I did find it struggled to have the same sort of impact in the more open plan spaces that we tested it out in. That's not to say that the A5 wouldn't do the job outdoors or in a big open plan kitchen because it's still really enjoyable to listen to. I just feel like there could have been another gear to go up to, but that might just be me nitpicking and personally would not use the speaker like that. I don't see it as the sort of thing that you're gonna want for listening loud all the time, but I think if that was what you were in the market for, I don't think you'd be looking here anyway. Now, obviously though, this is Bang & Olufsen that we're talking about. And like I've been reiterating throughout this video, realistically, that price tag isn't all audio. So although you might not be getting the best balance between money spent and sound performance, you're spending the big bucks for a combination of it all. Top class audio, functionality, and the bespoke design too. So I feel like there's room to be a little bit more forgiving. But let's be realistic here. It's 900 pounds that we're talking about. And based on that alone, this one just isn't gonna feel right for a lot of us. For me, even though I have a huge soft spot for this speaker, it just wouldn't be for me right now. Now, that's not because I don't think it's worth it for the right person, I just don't think that I'm the type of person or have the budget that this speaker is made for. This is a designer piece of tech, your own little bit of luxury, and it feels more like a piece of furniture or art than it does a portable speaker. And if it magically appeared in my home, I'd be over the moon. So if you've got to this point and you think you are that type of person that wants premium portability from a brand you love that looks just as good as it sounds, then you're looking in the right place. Now, I can't tell you whether it's worth 900 pounds because what I value is gonna be different to you. But for the right person, I know you're not gonna regret getting your hands on one of these. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Let me know down in the comments below what you think, and I'll catch you all in the next video.